Where's Jack? Alora asked the others, who were lounging around, setting some last few things up as they waited for their first guest to arrive. They had all quickly changed out of their uniforms and put in the order for way too much grub. Alora pacing up and down in a pretty conservative blue dress that looked like they doubled as robes. Still getting changed and groomed in the bathroom, I think, Nika smirked, who looked like she was ready for the gym in dark purple spandex with strategically fashionable armor plates. Unless he's run away. Wouldn't blame him after today's shenanigans. Yes, well, I'm sure we can all conduct ourselves appropriately tonight, Alora replied with a stern look at all of her friends. You do know both Luvia and Vanya have said they'll come along, right? Safer replied, having already helped herself to some sweets as she slumped down on the sofa, having chosen a black top, shorts, and white thigh-high sock combination. No chance of that with those two. Plus, Rayla and Zell have said they'll come, and you just know they have game plans of their own. Nia sends her apologies, Chiu added, as she lazily floated in the air reading the book, who had just thrown on some leather trousers and an orange crop top showing off her belly. But she and Renna have other plans. Renna having plans? Sefi snorted. Does she do anything apart from meditate under waterfalls and act bitchy to anyone and everyone? She's not that bad, Olora groaned. She's just a little standoffish. She tried to pick a fight with Jack after acknowledging that he'd done a good deed for her best friend, Nika replied firmly, with Chio nodding in agreement. A good deed that she has the ability to do herself, but has never done. Well, you may be right, Olora conceded. Speaking of, though, is Jack still in the bathroom? Chio, are you able to see if he's alright? Chio rolled her eyes before Jenny extending her thoughts to where Jack was, what he was doing, and... Whoa. The other girls watched in confusion, as Chio's eyes went wide, and her skin turned the darkest shade of blue they had ever seen, before she dropped out of the air, hitting the floor stiff as a board. Chio, Allura called out in confusion. Are you okay? Jack came back to the living room about ten minutes later, having tried and failed to neaten his hair and appear a bit more presentable, wearing his dark hoodie and jeans he had bought earlier that day, which was pretty much the only civilian clothing he had. Hopefully he'd be able to earn some cash for some proper clothes with the others over the weekend. For their part, it was obvious the girls had dolled themselves up a bit in their own unique way, though Jack was a little confused. After all, this was only meant to be a movie and takeaway night between themselves and a few friends, plus an impromptu sleepover due to recent events. Maybe they invited a few guys over as well. Val and Krill seemed pretty cool, and he wouldn't mind getting to know them a bit better. There you are, Alora called out with a sigh. Do you always take this long to get changed, or is that just a guy thing? Sefi rolled her eyes from her place on the sofa, clearly not bothered about Jack's temporary absence, while Chio for some reason turned a darker shade of blue and averted her eyes. Drink? Nika grinned as she threw Jack a can. I'm guessing you're pretty thirsty right now. She ended with a bemused look, which immediately had Sefi and Chio staring daggers at her. Alora for her part looked confused, but she quickly put it out of mind. Jack, what kind of movies do you normally watch? I know of a few good romantic comedies you might like. Jack felt more than saw the others deflate at the suggestion, to which he completely empathised. Definitely not his thing. He hadn't seen anything good in the months before he was taken from Earth, with the exception of a few James Bond movies, or anything involving Keanu Reeves or Henry Cavill. There were also a few older, more mature films that his older brothers had let him see when they were meant to be looking after him as well. Romantic comedies aren't really my thing, Jack replied, as the other girls sighed in relief. I tend to like action or horror, but I'm cool with it if you want to see anything else. Drift Space Darkness would be good. It's a great horror movie, Sefi called out with a mischievous look towards a wide-eyed Chio, who looked unusually worried about that suggestion. The Destroyer 1 and 2 is a must, added Nika, as something at Alora's hip started chirping. Well, maybe we can take suggestions from our guests, Alora replied, a little less enthusiastically than usual on hearing the suggestions. Let's go greet them. The gate had barely creaked open before a scantily clad Vanya dashed through, to quickly stand next to and put an arm around the bemused Jack, ruffling his hair. Hi, Jack. I missed you. He had to admit, the brown fur was very comfortable, coarser, longer and thicker than Nika's, and there was certainly a lot of it peeking out of the t-shirt and booty shorts many times too small for the bunny girl. Hey, Vanya, Jack replied, as he politely slipped out of her grasp, trying to pat his now messy hair back into place. And hi, Rael and Zell. Sparty not with you? No, replied Vanya more seriously. 
Her father is quite strict and expects her back home by a certain time after school. The others nodded sadly, as if this was a common occurrence. The group just stood there chatting amongst themselves, as Jack just looked around at the sights, only really responding to questions rather than being proactive in the conversation. He naturally sucked at small talk and was happy to be on the sidelines, though a few minutes later he spotted something interesting in the sky. Is that a dragon? He asked excitedly, as he pointed at a dark shape flying towards them. The others just looked at him with confused expressions. I mean, discovering that the drow were real was a bit weird, especially when they were so much like the stories minus the whole, we love spiders stuff, but dragons? You have stories about dragons too? Alora asked, sounding perplexed. Why didn't you mention it earlier? Well, it didn't really come up, Jack replied, not understanding the confusion. There's loads of stories we have about them, about how they have lots of treasure, our haughty AF. I tell you what though, I read some books when I was younger about dudes that road dragons. That'd be really cool. The expressions of the others turned to abject horror, but Jack didn't seem to notice. Honestly, what I wouldn't give to saddle up on one of those things and ride it? Jack turned around and noticed the gaping looks of shock on the others' faces for the first time. What? They were immediately interrupted by a thunk as the dragon pitched into a dive and landed on the open grass in front of them. Jack barely had time to think, oh shit, as the dragon's form shifted and shrank into a more familiar one. That landing was magnificent, I know! Luvia called out to the others, basking in what she thought was awe at her majesty. Oh, hi Jack! If you thought that was magnificent, just wait until I show you more. Um, Jack started, dumbstruck. Hi, Luvia. Were you always able to do that? After that, they all got settled rather quickly, though there was a lot of impatience waiting for the food. With militia checkpoints and the movement of troops, it was understandable, however. Jack eventually decided to get some air after Vanya tried to get him alone for an interview, only to promptly be questioned by Nika why she didn't have anything with her to conduct it. Slipping away, he sat down on the balcony in the lotus position, looking up at the stars and the spaceship convoys coming to and from. It had been a while since he had tried meditation, but he found it helpful for when he needed to calm down and focus his thoughts, and so he sat in silence for several minutes, simply contemplating the day he had. Mind if I join you? Sure. Jack didn't need to turn his head to tell it was Alora. She was his first real friend in this galaxy, and in the month they had known each other, he had confided a lot in her during their chores at the Temple of Hope. When she knew something was up, he knew he'd have to talk about it to her at some point. Are the others a little too much for you? She asked, sitting next to him, trying to copy the cross-legged lotus position, which she was eventually able to do after pulling on her feet to get them in the right spots on her knees. Yeah, it's just a bit weird for me. You've not had anyone interested in you in that way? She asked softly. It's not that, Jack shook his head. I don't even know the implications of pursuing that kind of thing with another species. And every time I think about it, I just wonder what my family would say, were they here? It's quite common here, Alora reminded him, as she put a hand on his shoulder. A gesture she had learned from Jack was one of reassurance for his people. I doubt you'd have so many requests for mating rights if not. I take it mating rights is what I think it is? Jack snorted. Afraid so, Alora replied with a smile. Those types of bonds or temporary arrangements are common between species. But then what happens if they want more than friendship and are wanting to keep things as they were before? Jack asked pointedly. I don't want to lose friends over this when I have so few here. It can happen, Alora allowed. But if it does, is it not better to enjoy the limited time of happiness you share rather than never experiencing it at all? Perhaps, Jack replied. Though with that reply, his thoughts returned to another, darker time. Though, some of my people would disagree with you. Maybe you worry about what they think too much, Alora soothed. Jack didn't necessarily agree. His brothers and cousins had done a good job at preparing and advising him, but there were still times where he disagreed. You mentioned that humans were the only intelligent species on your world, Alora continued. How would you know if your people would disapprove of you getting closer to members of another species here? Jack gave a long sigh. He knew why. Though with the story he also felt the old shame return. Because, in a way, it's happened before, he replied hoarsely. How? Alora asked. You said humans were the only- We are, Jack replied firmly. It's a little complicated to explain, since I haven't seen it much here. But the closest thing I can think of is the difference between the Aladri and the Aladra. Alora's face darkened slightly before Jack quickly explained. 
I don't pretend to know all the details about that, but Mr. Sparrow said it resulted in a divide that has never been healed. Both sides, despite being the same or similar peoples, now consider themselves completely separate from the other. From what little I've seen here, that really isn't common, is it? Alora shook her head. It's extremely rare, and those divided usually fall under the power of another people or are scattered and fated to eventual extinction. Both my people and the Aladra are strong enough in their own ways to survive, but time will eventually consume us. Jack nodded in understanding. Imagine that tenfold. Maybe a hundred or even a thousand. Alora slowly nodded, mouth opening slightly, but with no worse to say. That's humanity, Jack whispered. We will always find ways to create an us and them landscape, from ethnicity to religion to nations, even politics these days. Jack gave another deep breath, almost as if stalling to say the words. In my case, the girl I fell in love with was of another race and religion. Jack spoke slowly and deliberately, breathing heavily as he brought the memories forth. We were classmates that just so happened to have surnames close in alphabetical order, so we sat next to one another often. Over time, we became friends and started hanging out more, and that's when it started. Aloha still looked a little confused, so Jack tried to give some context. My family and ancestors have been citizens of my country for as far back as records show, but more recently we've had several waves of immigration from other parts of the world. Historically, many have integrated well with our society, but in this case we had problems with terrorist attacks and gang activity from this wave, among other things. All this built up a lot of resentment on both sides, which happens a lot in our history. So when she apparently told some of her friends in confidence that she liked me, all hell broke loose when work got around the school. She bore the brunt of the bullying as nobody knew I felt the same way, but I got teased as well, even by my brothers when they found out. I'm so sorry, Alora replied, her expression one of horror. What did you do? That's the worst part, Jack replied, refusing to look Alora in the eyes. I did nothing. I said nothing. I distanced myself away as far as I possibly could because I didn't want to get bullied by the others. Eventually I was left alone, but she wasn't, and it got worse. What happened? She eventually swapped schools, Jack lied. I never saw her again. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't blame you for doing what you did. Jack just nodded weakly. They sat there in silence for a few minutes before Laura got up. Food should be here soon. Take as much time as you need. I was just coming to bring you a cup of a large wine. She placed a mug of the rich red liquid next to him, with Jack grabbing it but not taking a sip. Thanks, Laura. I'll be there soon. Jack sat there for several minutes as he tried to stop the tears from falling. He had hidden it from Laura, but he couldn't be seen like this. He had buried the shame before. It didn't take long to bottle it back up once again. He couldn't let it happen in the future. Men didn't cry. He took a sip of the wine and found it surprisingly light as he walked back to the living room. Sure, there was a little alcohol in there, but barely what you would find in the weakest cider on earth. He doubted anyone could get drunk on this. Oh. At the centre of the room, he saw Sefi and Vanya engaging in what could only be a drinking contest, both being cheered on by Nika, who was still looking rather lucid despite the cup in her hand. Luvia seemed to be in a heated discussion with Rael and Zael, Though fortunately it looked like the Red Dragon was stone cold sober. Chiu on the other hand looked to be in our own world, levitating around the room seemingly at random, and having a delayed pain reflex when she accidentally bobbed her head on the ceiling, as Alora tried to grab her by an ankle to bring her back down to the ground. It was almost a full minute before the others noticed his arrival. Jack! Vanya slurred, as she bounded over to the human. You've gotta have more wine! And before Jack could say anything, she was boldly trying to drag him to the sofa with one arm, while pouring him more wine with the other. Guys, let's watch a movie! That's not a bad idea, Nika shocked to Alora. Calm everyone down before we offset the drink with food whenever it arrives. All right, Alora spoke up. Pick your spot and sit down. You should sit next to me, Jack, Luvia calmly spoke up, though with a certain intensity that made Jack wonder what hell would be unleashed if he said no. No fair, Luvia, Vanya slurred as she gripped onto Jack tight. I claimed him first. Jack could only raise his eyebrows at that claim, though he strangely wasn't too fussed about being claimed by the rabbit. Unfortunately, though, Luvia was. 
I never heard Jack agree to anything of the sort, Luvia growled, before she turned to Jack with a sickly sweet-looking expression. Jack, are humans fireproof? No, Jack shouted in exasperation before coming down. I mean, no, we're not fireproof, but there's no need to argue. I'm more than happy to sit in between you. His sentence faded out upon seeing the look of absolute betrayal from the others. But if the successful two noticed it, they didn't mention it. In the end, most people were sat down and reasonably calm and comfortable, though Jack was squashed between an oversized rabbit and an undersized red dragon. It was awkward as hell, so he just sat there with his arms folded, really hoping he wouldn't pop a visible boner, an effort that was made ever more difficult by his neighbor's blatant flirting in Kino. Alright, movie selected? Everyone ready? Nigger asked, being the one to pick the movie. Chio, where are you sitting? Chio lazily stood in front of the TV, seemingly waiting for something. On hearing Nika, she turned and grinned to the others, before launching herself towards Jack with her telekinesis. He didn't even think, quickly getting to his feet to catch her before the force of Chio sat him back down. Here will do very nicely, the smug-looking Chio told the others, as she adjusted her seat on Jack's lap. Oh, sweet mother of Jesus, Jack thought to himself, as Chio leaned back and put her arms around him, while Nika started the movie. The movies were great. Destroyer 2 was a definite hit with Jack, though there was a brief pause when their food finally arrived and they typed into a veritable buffet, with Jack originally not wanting to pick out around the girls, but completely giving up on seeing them gorge in some of the sweet desserts that Laura had ordered. Jack had then probably taken a slice of each of the pizza-like dishes. His body would pay for it later, but despite the unusual base and toppings, he had no idea what they were, he felt no regrets. They then sat back down and saw the historical thriller Chio had picked. Birds of a feather showed the war against the flock in amazing detail. Once the two-hour film ended, the discussion was up on what people wanted to do next. Perhaps a few board games? Olora suggested. Too boring, Vanya interjected before looking at Jack. Maybe hunt the- No! The rest of the group shot back, leaving no room for argument. What about video games? Sevi perked up. We can play around for a bit. She looked at Jack with a sly grin. Jack, you'll love this. Do you know what video games are? I have no idea, Jack replied with his best poker face. Well, you're going to love it, Sefi smiled mischievously. Got enough controllers for everyone minus one, so you can watch us gun each other down. Are we playing for a wager? Vanya asked, giving Sefi a knowing look. That's a good idea, Vanya, Sefi replied, blatantly having prepared for this. The winner gets to take Jack out on a date. Oh, come on. Alora rolled her eyes. Did you really think your stupid plan would- Sounds acceptable to me, Luvia interrupted, grabbing a controller. Such an honor to enjoy the company of the Stravir, one of the twins added, as both of them took controllers. Sorry, Alora, looks like you're outvoted, Nika grinned, playing along and giving Jack a wink. This is ridiculous, but fine, Alora groaned, grabbing the second to last controller. Not playing, Geo? I fear that typing to Jack to communicate has left my hands- too stiff to play, Chia pouted. They supposedly had no problem typing the message to Jack. I would love to join him on a date sometime, though I am simply not able to compete. She ended that last part with poppy eyes at Jack. That's fine, we can still go on a date sometime, Jack hurriedly added to reassure Chio, who immediately dropped the act and gave him a satisfied smile. That's not fair, Chio, Sefi called out. You just did that because you suck at video games. Chio just shrugged unapologetically as she sat back and watched as the game was created, the eighth controller just lying on the ground before Jack picked it up. Oh, you want to give it a go, Jack? Vani asked in a slightly curious tone. Why not? Jack replied with a small smile. Looks fun to try. Well, it's not easy, Sefi warned. It's a shooter game. You need really good reflexes to shoot and jump around. Sounds like fun, Jack smiled, knowing full well that he would be well within his element. All right then, Sefi chirped up. Don't worry. We'll go easy on you. How? Sefi yelled at the TV, practically in tears. She'd been so sure she'd beat the competition and score a date with Jack. And while Vanya and Nika were good, she knew she was better. Especially when she had something. Or someone to properly aim for. There was no way she would have expected Jack to decimate the entire competition. Alora was the first to go, not naturally being that good at video games, but being a good sport. Next was surprisingly Nika, who wouldn't stop laughing once she realised what Jack was up to. 
Luvia accidentally destroyed her controller in a fit of rage after Sefi was the one to take her last life, though she immediately ordered a better replacement controller be delivered the next morning, having thoroughly blamed the now broken one for her loss. Vanya was next, having been whittled down by the twins who were blatantly working together to take advantage of the Vestis' drunkenness. They however were no match for Jack, taking both out with a grenade. Sefia put up a hell of a fight, as she'd been able to take Jack's first life through use of explosives, but the scritter was no match for Jack, getting more distraught with every life she'd lost, until finally Jack won, making his character repeatedly crouch up and down until the game timed out. Must be beginner's luck, Jack cheered to the congratulations of everyone else, before he noticed that Sefia turned away. Hey, that was a good game, Jack started, putting a hand on her shoulder. You played well. But not well enough. Sefi quietly sniffed, and it was only now Jack realised that she was crying. I really wanted to win. Jack wasn't too sure how to answer that one. He hadn't technically agreed to go out on a date with the winner, but he guessed that Sefi had gone swallowed up by her own excitement, only to be bitterly disappointed. Well, you can't really date yourself, Jack, Alora called over as delicately as she could. What kind of reward did you want for first place? Alora was looking at Jack very pointedly, and considering their earlier conversation, knew how he wanted to play this. Well, since I have nothing to do tomorrow morning before we set off, I was going to take a look around and explore the city. Jack started slowly. I could do with a guy to show me around though. You up for it, Sefi? The scritter didn't say a word, but turned around and embraced the human boy.